my dog. <laughs> All right, we are live. So it is National Homeownership Month, and I'm here with Eric Drost from Eaton. How's it going, Eric? It's going well. How are you, Mike? I haven't seen you in uh, in a few months. Yeah, it's been a while. What has it been since uh, January? I guess since IBS. Since IBS, yeah. Where it's still not it's still not clear whether you cheated during the uh, the battle of the rock homes, right? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Listen, I want to be very clear. And for anyone watching, I did not cheat. Um, I love music. I'm very, it is like my gift. There, if there's one thing I'm gifted in, that's it. So there's no cheating there. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. No, I know. I know. So yeah, we're talking uh, all things electrical uh, because it is National Homeownership Month. So with, you, with buying, selling, uh, owning, excuse me, we want to make sure that you have all your bases covered when it comes to electrical. So uh, do you want to kick this off, Eric? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I know that you have some some questions for me. Um, I'd love to address those questions. Uh, so let, let's let's go ahead and get started. All right. Now, uh, we talk about this a lot, but one of the things I think this is very important for people to know is uh, what do you need to know about electrical work before you purchase a home? Is it wise to get an electrical inspection if you are buying an old home? No, I, I mean, know I have my thoughts on that. that that's a great question. I, I, older homes are, are probably not going to meet the current National Electric Code. Um, so my suggestion would be to budget for a, a home inspection, right? An mm -hmm. electrical in inspection is going to help you um, make sure that you have the proper mix of arc fault breakers and ground fault breakers and receptacles. And then it actually meets the code. and mm -hmm. As you and I talk about a lot, electrical work is never DIY. Never. So when you're installing something cool like a Z-Wave dimmer or, or switch, um, my recommendation is to, to call a professional. Yeah. Yep. I, I completely agree. And you know what? Especially in old homes. Um, I love old homes personally. There's a lot of character. There's a lot of charm. But with old homes, there are old problems, stuff like uh, aluminum wiring, knob and tube wiring, stuff that can cause an electrical fire. So when you are buying an, buying an old home and new home, but an, especially an old home, make sure you get an electrical inspection before you purchase a home. Because listen, you can upgrade your kitchen, you can upgrade your bathroom, you can upgrade the flooring. Make sure that at least you have a good shell. Or if you don't, at least you know what you're going in with. Exactly. It can it can definitely avoid a lot of uh, back end costs that you would have to have to pay. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, that my my recommendation one hundred percent get a home inspection. Make sure they check the panel. Yes. Now, uh, for people who already own a home, um, what are some warning signs that you may have an issue with your electrical? Stuff so like flick, it, flickering light. Yeah, I mean flickering lights. Are, you know, if your breakers or, or receptacles are tripping a lot. Um, I think you just need to call an electrician to come in and check it out uh, because sometimes the symptoms can be can be warning signs. Um, yes. So, you know, you need to be aware of loose receptacles. If you're plugging in the vacuum and it's just not holding uh, inside that receptacle or if you smell an odor from from your receptacles, you need to you need to finish uh, what you're doing with that receptacle. Turn that circuit off. And then, and then call an electrician in to, uh, to take a look at the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Tammy. Tammy says hi to, to both of us. How's it going? Hi, Tammy. Uh, yeah, so that's a great point. I mean, I know I've done jobs on a house. There, there's actually, I did a job. It was like probably a century home. So it was at least 100 years old. And I remember plugging in an extension cord. And then on the other end of it, it started spitting out flames. So there I didn't know this at the time because we were coming in to fix this house and we did fix that problem, but Good. there are warning signs that usually lead up to that and that it doesn't go that extreme. Like you said, whether there's discoloration around the outlet, um, if there's flickering with the lights, uh, make sure again, you get, uh, you get that inspected. You have an electrician come in and bring, uh, you know, bring their knowledge into your home and tell you how to prevent, uh, an electrical fire because it's not like a drywall patch where you know you can do that and look at it and be like you know it wasn't the greatest but uh hey there's not a hole in my wall anymore electrical is kind of like either it's safe or it's not there's not a lot of in between i completely agree with you there yeah um now lots of people ask us about their electrical panel when does it need to be replaced and what options are out, are out there so that that's a good question so a, a lot of homes uh, you know 
in the States, uh, in Canada are, are aging, right? So we've got a lot of homes that are 50 plus years old. And in the past, uh, 60 amps of service, that was fine for your home. Uh, but today, 100 amps, 150 amps, 200 amps. I mean, we, we use a lot of a lot of electricity today. So we want to make sure that your home can support that. Um, you know, I, I, I can't stress this enough. Make sure that when your home is inspected, that the inspector goes and takes a look at that electrical panel because you have to make sure that you have an adequate amount of power uh, inside your home because we're really building uh, our infrastructure in our home with a lot more electronics and appliances nowadays. Yeah, especially since now we're leaning towards the smart homes now. You know, we have... Uh, you know, our, our doors there, you know, we get a notification. If someone enters our home, we can, someone rings the doorbell. We have a camera that looks at them. We can adjust the blinds, the lights to set the mood. And, you know, we want to make sure we have space on the panel to do that. And like you said, old homes may have 50, 60 amps. Now I know my house has 200 amps and that may right. sound ridiculous, but there's a lot that goes into homes now with technology and, uh, you know, that's constantly changing. So even having space on your panel is always a good thing. There's no question. I, I, I do think that uh, when you do uh, decide to make a home purchase, you, you need to assure that you have uh, the ability in the room inside the panel to expand if you're looking to expand. Um, sometimes yeah. your ideas at, at that point in time uh, differ from your, your future ideas, right? So, you know, you got to kind of have that mindset that uh, you're, you're probably going to grow your home. Uh, you're probably going to to do something in your home that's going to change the infrastructure of it. So uh, making sure that you have that room in your panel is is very important. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, this next topic I want to talk about, uh, it's one that's close to home because it actually affected uh, myself when I lived with my dad. And I'll tell that story after, but uh, I want to talk about surge protection because not mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, not enough people, I think, know about this. Um, and I want to talk about why it's a good idea to invest in surge protection uh, because, I mean, especially nowadays, we have a lot of money worth of electronics just in our home. There, there's absolutely no question. So, so the big thing is surge is so important that it was written into the 2020 National Electric Code for for new installations. So. Um, you know, any state that adopts that code, uh, the new installations, or uh, if you pull a permit for a home, it's going to be a requirement to uh, to install surge protection. Because let's face it, I mean, an average home has thousands of dollars worth of valuable appliances and electronics, and they're all susceptible to surge. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, many of the surge strips that we have out there, uh, they may or may not provide enough protection for your television set, uh, for your refrigerator. And let's face it, it's really hard to get a surge strip behind your refrigerator, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. So we, we offer, um, you know, a, a bunch of different solutions for that. Uh, we have uh, surge solutions that actually go directly on your breaker box or inside your breaker box that's going to protect your whole home from electrical surge. And that's both the 120 volt appliances and the 240 volt appliances as well. Um, so it's going to protect everything that you have in your in your home. Um, Eaton stands by the warranty of those products. Um, so you know it's important. I, I, I can't stress it enough. I have surge protection on my house. I make sure that my folks have it on their house because you know pool pumps, computers, televisions, refrigerators—they're really expensive to replace. Yeah, anything that's plugged in, if, if you get a surge, it could fry your electronics. So actually, um, not so much of a funny story, but this is kind of how it came it came to light for our family, how important a surge, surge protection was for our home is that uh, way, way long ago, I lived with my dad and uh, I remember we had this lightning storm and what happened is it struck and it sent a surge through the entire home. Now. Us homesmen, we are big electronics people. We love gadgets. We love, you know, TV, sound system. My dad loves uh, a good, good blaring sound system. So he had all that plugged in. Now, what happened was when this surge happened, it fried his speakers. It fried uh, his whole electronic system, his TV, and cost so much money just because he didn't have surge protection. So that fancy TV you just bought, that sound system you just plugged in, protect that. And you can protect that easily 
just by installing a surge protection on your panel. I, I completely agree. And, and there's actually a second level of surge protection that you can put on your home as well. So installing it at the breaker box is super important. It's a must um, mm -hmm. to protect those electronics. Yeah. It's 100% a must. The second layer of it, yeah. um, Eaton sells surge receptacles that you can actually install behind your refrigerator because they install the same way as a normal receptacle. Uh, they have an audible alarm on the receptacles themselves. So if that device is damaged by surge, the receptacle is damaged by surge, it self-sacrifices and it also informs the homeowner uh, that you have a problem and, and then you can go ahead and replace the MOV that's inside the, uh, the receptacle itself. So it's a, it's a really slick product. It's, it's one that we do a pretty good job marketing here at Eaton. Yeah, well, that, that is a brilliant, uh, brilliant product. Because imagine, you know, not knowing that your outlet got fried or not knowing that your uh, electronic got fried. So it's, um, that it, it, it is worth the money to protect. And it's not even a lot of money. Just, just do it. Get a surge protector. Get surge protection outlets. Yeah. Let's see. Sharon. Oh, I missed that. Sharon left a comment there. Um, our electrician said it wasn't necessary because in all his years, he had never seen a panel fried by a surge. Time for a new electrician. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Not to necessarily. He could be an old school electrician or they could be an old school electrician who maybe had just not seen it. It's always good to just educate them because, you know what, maybe I wouldn't have seen it. But the fact that I was educated on it and that I did see it firsthand because it happened to my dad's house. Um, that is why I care so much about it because I have seen it firsthand. So, you know, we just got to spread that and, and educate people and share that. It's not a lot of money to install it and it protects your home. It's like insurance. It's insurance for your electronics. Exactly. And, and the, the big thing is I, I noticed in that comment, it said he never seen a surge, um, affect the surge, a, a panel. Yes. Um, the panel, the panel is important. And, and I completely agree that that the panel is is obviously the D mark of your house where the electricity comes in. But really what we're trying to protect mm -hmm. is the little green boards inside every piece of our electronics. And they're so sensitive that if, if they get a transient and that spikes very short, it's going to damage that little green board. And between me and you, uh, society is changing. You don't call the Maytag repairman anymore. Uh, no. I, I shouldn't say you don't, but most people don't. Uh, yeah. You replace the item and, and then that item is either recycled or sent to a landfill. Um, so we, we want to protect these appliances before, you know, their usable life is over. Yeah. And you know what? The average home now has uh, more or could have more than $15,000 worth of electronics. So imagine having to replace that just from not being surge protected. It, I mean, it's that simple, just install one. Then yep. your peace of mind, it's done. Absolutely. Uh, okay, now let's talk about energy savings because uh, that's a big thing. I mean, now we switch to LED light bulbs. We're trying to save as much energy as possible because it is expensive. So um, why is installing a dimmer a good idea? So of course, anytime we can, we can save energy, it's important. It's not only important to us, but it affects uh, the environment. Anytime we can lower it, lower our carbon emissions, it's obviously best for the environment. So um, anytime you can pull less electricity, uh, it, you know it's it's a must. So installing yeah. dimmers on your house where you don't need to have a uh, hundred percent of, of your light is is a way for us to to help in a very small way. Um, our new universal dimmers, uh, they're perfect for kitchens and bathrooms and living rooms. Uh, because they make the lighting comfortable as well, right? So not only are you saving money and, and helping the environment, but you're also creating an ambiance for your, your home because we don't always want to have lights on at 100%. Um, obviously, these dimmers are available in a variety of styles and colors. So, uh, you know, we can adjust to, to your home. Um, we make toggle switches and decorator switches. So any way you're comfortable turning your lights off and on. Um, and these are also all available. We can dim any light source, even the, the new LED lighting. Yeah, so, and that, that's great. And you know what, not to mention the ambiance. You know, you want to set the mood for something, whether you're having a romantic night with your partner, dim those lights, or maybe you're having a movie night, whatever it could be, 
Dimmer is a winner, okay? It's that simple. Dimmer is a winner. I like that. Yeah, it, it just came to me. <laughs> so Jamie says, share. Oh, yeah. Go to myhome.eaton.com to find an Eaton certified electrical contractor near you to help you with your electrical needs. And, and again, Eaton helps you with that. Uh, so again, myhome.eaton.com to find an Eaton certified electrical contractor. You want to make sure your electrician is certified. And, and one better is that Eaton certifies this electrician saying, you know what? These not only do they have their license, but they are a pro and they know our products through and through. So that's a, a very important step you don't want to miss. Yeah, I know a lot of those guys no. personally and and they are they are terrific uh, businessmen and they are phenomenal electricians. So I, I fully fudge, I fully back that that statement. Yeah. Yeah. You and me both. So um, now I want to talk a bit about uh, doing your own electrical and why that's not a good idea. First and foremost, um, you don't want to find out the hard way you know, like I, I'll go back to patching a dry, patching drywall. You know, you patch a hole, it doesn't look good. You're like, okay, well, next time I'll do it better. Right. Electrical is not like that. If you do poor electrical, if you um, mess up the wiring, you could a shock yourself. If you try and mess with the panel, you could kill yourself. Uh, and then if you uh, wire your electrical wrong, you could start an electrical fire. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And there is a reason we have electricians that have to go to school who have to learn the trade to do this properly to prevent the homeowner from hurting themselves or their family. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there's a there's a saying that says, you know, many try to DIY, but with electrical work, it, it's probably not a good idea. All electrical work should be performed by a certified electrical contractor. I, yeah. I can't say it enough electrical is not a diy job and it's not something you want to find out the hard way hire a pro yeah it's it's really that simple and, and you know what if you're going to try and diy something do it on something that is purely aesthetics and then you can find out why we have professionals that do that for a living because there's a lot more that goes into it but again you want to do it do it yourself just don't touch electrical yourself hire a professional absolutely now, um, I, we did touch on this, but again, for anyone who's missed it, uh, I'm here talking with Eric Drost from Eaton and um, how to find an electrical contractor. Eric, uh, we talked about this before <laughs> going to um, what my, I have it written down here somewhere, my home, home Eaton.com to find an Eaton certified electrical contractor near you. So, Absolutely. So a certified electrical contractor, they, they can just assure that your house is up to code. And, you know, kind of the premise of this conversation was around feeling safe in your home, having peace of mind and, and understanding that from an electrical perspective, you're safe in your home. So if you want to install mm -hmm. something uh, or you just want to double check your home system, remember, all work should be completed by a certified electrician. And Eaton can help you find a certified electrician. Uh, if you go to the website, myhome.eaton.com. Um, and then you can learn more about how Eaton can help you, uh, your home be safer, smarter, and more, more efficient at eaton.com forward slash residential. Um, there are links there to find uh, electrical contractors. You can view our product basket. Uh, you can also um, find where to buy. So these are these are very important. Um, you know, it's a very important link uh, to you know if you're thinking about doing some work or you're thinking about hiring or or, or adding to your home, um, go there and and make sure that that all of your electrical work is done by a certified electrician. Absolutely, make sure they have an ESA number. Make sure they are certified, and, and make sure again you don't do it yourself. And it's that simple, Eric. You you said it well. Head to the Eaton website, head to myhome.eaton.com to find an electrical contractor near you who is Eaton certified. Um, it's that simple, guys. I mean, electrical is an integral part to your home. You want to make sure it's done properly. And uh, you know what? You'd be surprised how uh, how technical you can get if you'd head to the Eaton website and see the things that you can add to your home. I mean, it's actually really exciting. And then hire an electrician. You can find from there to add those things to your home, to make it that much smarter, that much more efficient, uh, and help save yourself some money in the end. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, the big thing is make sure you're comfortable, right? However you're comfortable, make sure you're comfortable. So, you know, the Eaton website can definitely help you. Um, and, and we will definitely get you uh, in, in pointed in the direction of a, a certified electrician. Um, Mike, I, I really appreciate you having me on today. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you again in, in person. Uh, but if I can't see you in person, it's nice to see you on screen. And I, I you're yeah, on I screen a lot more. on my TV, but not much on my on my computer. Yeah, it's good to chat with you, man. As always, you know, we have a lot of fun together. So I'm hoping uh, next year's International Builder Show is uh, still going. And hopefully we can all get together and even get together before then. And if not, we'll do another one of these. That sounds great. I appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Again, uh, we talked about uh, your National Homeownership Month, what you can do to maintain your home when you're buying, when you're selling your home, all of these things. If you missed it, go back to the beginning. There's a lot of great information in this video. And uh, again, thanks for watching and have a great day. Thanks. See you guys. Bye, Mike.